front page is a head injury, of course. And can somebody tell me the difference between a concussion and a contusion? Contusion is bruising and be pretty serious. They can have a loss of consciousness for a while. Bang, get your, get your um, head injury out, Miss Maria. Stay with your girl here. You gotta be the police now. Watch her ass, because she's sleeping. That ain't it. I promise you, that ain't it. That was the cranial nerve. Okay, so your patient can have a contusion, which is worse. It's a bruising of the actual brain, okay? The concussion, make sure you quote me, violent shaking of the brain. Violent shaking of the brain. Neurological dysfunction for about five minutes. Which score is better? A Glasgow scale of three or a Glasgow scale of 15? 15. 15. What does it measure? E, D, M, I taught you. I, verbal, motor. Don't dizzy away from what I taught you. E, D, M. I, verbal, motor. Why do I teach it like this? Because the score, the highest score you can get in either of those is three, four, and five. I mean, uh, four, five, and six are like. Did it total 15 if we do four, five, and six? Yeah. You should have a total of 15, four, five, and six. So what was the first measurement? I, total is four. Highest score you can get is four. V for verbal, highest score you can get is five. Motor, highest score you can get is six. Four, five, six equals 15. Highest score you can get. When do we do it? At the scene of the accident and on admission and every day. It is a coma scale. When your patient hits 12, send them the hell off your unit. You can be transferred to the floors. You can't send this fool home now, it is a coma scale. But I mean, you know, they're gonna get out of your damn unit. You need your unit back, you got 12 total, wow, big look. So you gotta get them out of there. Okay, you can send them upstairs to the floors. Powers, UH talk. Uh, now, if they have anywhere between a five, well, technically, a three and an eight, you already know it's comatose. Between three and eight, it's comatose. You guys know that. If you have that ambiguous number, nine, ten, and eleven, we're trying to get them to twelve. The first nursing action, when it starts to drop, turn them on their side. So rescue position, isn't that what that's called? Rescue position is sideline, turn them on their side. Okay. Now, all head injury patients are at risk for ICP, but initially when they come in, if you turn the page, You should have a CAT scan, I think. Yeah. So remember how when we did the heart attack patient that came in with their little complaints, we slapped them upside the head with oxygen, remember that? Okay, this is not much different. But when this patient comes in, first of all, if you're at the scene of the crime, all spinal cord injuries are assumed to be a head injury patient. But So that means that your first nursing action would be immobilized if you're at the scene of the, the, the injury. At the scene of the injury, all head injury patients, unless they get up and walk away, are considered spinal cord injuries. So immobilized is the first nursing action. Now, if they come in your hospital and you're the receiving nurse, your first priority is to get this CAT scan done, right? So this patient needs a CAT scan yesterday. When we do the CAT scan, it's going to let us know if there's a, a, a brain bleed, whether it's a subdural hematoma, intracranial hemorrhage, subarachnoid hematoma, whatever it is. It's going to let us know whether there's a brain bleed. 
Now, when it comes to this handout, if you look at it, Brother Man says, this is the worst headache I have ever had. Put subarachnoid hemorrhage for that. The worst headache I've ever had. You're going to put subarachnoid hemorrhage. And if you look on the board, it's basically a type of stroke. It's next to TIA, CDA. It's like almost like a stroke, right? It's a brain bleed, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now, what you have to know about the subarachnoid hemorrhage, this patient has an occipital headache. So we have a student in our evening class. She just returned after a year and a half of being gone. Why did she leave so abruptly? Well, because her husband told her that he had a headache when she got home. And when he had this headache, she said, really? He smokes, he has uh, elevated pressures, not ridiculous, but he does have elevated pressures. She says, what'd you take for it? Oh, I took it all. Motrin, tell us shit ain't work. You hear me now, right? So now we're going to the doctor because you know you've got a headache on this test. It's not bad, but you did have to know that shit, Tylenol, Motrin, all that shit don't work. We're going to the hospital. Now, she get to the ER, and the nurse, the RN, the triage nurse, says, sir, can you show me where your head hurts? He reached right back here. This is occipital headache. It's your occiput back here. So they kept him for a few hours. They had an IV going. They gave him some medicine for the headache. Uh, thought maybe, you know, he might be a little dehydrated or some shit because he's a hard worker or whatever. They noticed that the diastolic was 96. They knew he was over 50. They knew that he was a smoker. But yet, the doctor wrote for discharge. Nurses, you will question that order. I would never have let him out of my ER because the first thing out of my mouth would have been to my colleague, who's usually my really good friend, doctors and nurses are pretty good friends, I would have said, oh, dude, whoa, 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 wait a minute now. I want him out of here just like you. But look, you know he smoked, and when he first came in, he was saying he was hurting back here. You want to get a CAT scan before we let him out of here? And what doctor's going to say, no, 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 no. That didn't happen. So he left. He's a mechanic. The next day, he was found underneath a car, seizing and foaming at the mouth. He had a subarachnoid hemorrhage for which he lived through. So she took care of her husband for a year and a half. That's why she's not been in class that long. You don't want to do this shit. A CAT scan, boom, cured. I mean, really, we would have figured it out. We would have taken action, OK? Now, don't forget I said that CAT scan. Highlight it, do whatever you got to do to know that's always the first thing. Then if you look a little bit further down, you'll see that there are some pinpoint pupils. Y'all see them? Remember we talked about pinpoint pupils? That shit is not cool. That's a stroke. Look at the, it looks so weird, but it's really an ear. It's leaking fluid. It is called otorrhea. Otorrhea and rhinorrhea are with a basilar skull fracture. So I want you to write that. Otorrhea and rhinorrhea are going to be basilar skull fracture. Let me show you where that is. This is not a stroke. This is a guy who got, or lady, who had a head injury and he was more so back here. And so base, basilar. Skull fracture, base of the skull. When the injury took place, it got so deep with whatever he hit or she hit, maybe a fall or some sort, it got deep in there that it punctured where the spinal cord goes and the spinal fluid. Because there's a hole, it's leaking into the ears and out the nose. And remember, this basilar skull fracture can have meningitis. That's what I want you to remember. Basilar skull fractures at risk for meningitis. Okay. Now, real quick, just so you know, a very easy way to remember it. There are two 
types of hematomas or brain bleeds. There's really three, but we already covered one because subarachnoid hemorrhage or hematoma is related to uncontrolled hypertension and it has an occiput, uh, occipital headache. So that was that one. Uncontrolled hypertension, occipital headache, smoker, but uncontrolled hypertension. Now, so this guy, and I want you to write that on your little CAT scan page, right on one side of your page, subdural hematoma, on the other side, right epidural hematoma. Now, S is for subdural, S is for slow bleed. S is for subdural, S is for slow bleed. This is the type of bleed that Natasha Richardson had, and she, of course, is dead now. She's a famous actress, went on a ski trip with her husband, fell, went back to the little vacation lodge, the ambulance came to take her to the hospital. She said, no thanks, I'm doing fine. No, she wasn't. She had a slow bleed. She died a few hours later. Now, why is it slow? Look at my picture. It's blue, so it's venous. S for slow, S for subdural, blue for venous. What's quick and dirty? Epidural hematoma, fast, and arterial. So, Maria, you said look, subdural, slow, two S words, SS, blue, venous. Then you got your epidural, you got your um, very fast, and you have your arterial, because you know arteries just do the shit fast. Now, what do both of them need? They need a burr hole. They need a burr hole drilled into their head, drain it, okay. Now, the patient with an epidural hematoma will have a period of lucidity, it's called, lucid, lucidity. So first they're kind of loopy, which means confused, then they're completely clear, and then they go into coma. And I'm going to say that again. Epidural. This is epidural. First they're loopy, kind of goofy-like, then, and they even may have a brief loss of consciousness during this loopy stage. So loopy, out of it, kind of lose consciousness for a brief second or two. And then they go into this really clear, I'm fine, don't worry about it, and then rapidly followed by a coma. Okay. Now let's do some ICP. If you turn, I want you to write at the top of that page, study tonight. Turn. Study tonight, put ICP equals study tonight. And I have another one for you. This one is just look at it once. It's really nice. But then I have the next page that's going into a little bit more detail and it's not as busy. So there's three pages on ICP. <laughs> All right, now this ICP, we're going to walk through the page and you're just going to highlight and add stuff to the list. The first part of this says, Changes in LOC. Let me show you what I do for you guys. Here we go. And every student usually remembers this. The first sign of increased ICP, which is IICP, increased ICP, is decreased LOC. IICP, LOC. You gotta know those rhymes. I I C P L L O C. Increased I C P loss and level of consciousness. L L I I. Okay. Now, how would you know? Well, shit, it ain't that easy. So you're gonna remember 
that people start to lose their, their noodles, slowly but surely, the first thing that's going to go is going to be time. And it ain't what time it is. Nope, it's what year is it. What year is it and who's the president are the questions you ask. So that's when they're you're on the wrong page. Y'all gotta you gotta turn turn that page you just studied tonight. Oh. So that's why I'm going in order of the next page. Yeah. yeah, the funky face page. Okay, so you're gonna ask them the president and the year. If they say Trump, beat them. <laughs> Dustin. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. Okay, the next one, the last one to go is person. They usually know who people are. All right. Now, next one says, oh, by the LOC, I want you to write the words Glasgow. Glasgow. The words to make you crazy and make you know who to see first are irritability. I'm, I'm going to roll through these. You know these already because we did them in respiratory and cardiac. Irritability, anxiety, restlessness, apprehension, any behavior term, confusion, those are all the same in terms of you. Okay, drowsy, slow to arouse, all those mean the same thing. Patients' LOC is, is really dropping. Okay, eyes, papilla edema, swelling of the optic nerve. Swelling of the optic nerve. Uh-oh. Fixed and dilated pupils. What the hell is that? What's fixed and dilated? Make sure you write it. What did you say, baby? Mm -hmm. Fixed and dilated is dead again a door now. Fixed and dilated is dead. Think about that. They're fixed because dead people don't respond to your stupid pen light. Dilated. There is nothing. What dilates your eyes? Darkness, right? There's nothing darker than death. It's black. Fixed and dilated. Better than a door now. Okay, that's on there. 